Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video is going to be an upgraded version of a previous make. So those of you that have been here for a while will know that a couple of years ago I think I made this and this got so much wear, like really so much wear, that I thought I would give it another go but upgrade it. So the upgrade comes in the fabric, in the piping, in the lining. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is an actual kimono fabric. It's made from wool. And for the lining, I'm using this gorgeous brim silk, so lovely against the skin. And onto the cutting out, this is my back. I have two layers of that kimono fabric underneath this pattern piece and a notch at the bottom on each side. That will just let me know later on where my hem needs to be pressed. And for the lining, I've cut this on the fold and given myself a little bit of a pleat at the top. That will just give the lining a little bit more room to move about inside the jacket. You'll see how that works later on. And on to construction. So I'm just laying one back over the other, right sides together and pinning and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So I've just pressed that seam open. I'm not finishing this seam because this is the selvage edge, so no finishing required here. And on to the front. Again, two layers of that kimono fabric underneath this pattern piece and the same notches at each side of the hem. So that's my front cut out. And of course I cut the same pieces for my lining, which in both cases, front and back, is just a little bit shorter at the hem. That will ensure that my lining doesn't pop out from the hem when I'm wearing this. So now to join my front and back together at the shoulder seams. So just laying my front over my back, right sides together and pinning and ready to stitch. Stitching here again at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. And off camera, I've just ran that seam through the overlocker just to finish it and given it a little bit of a press. So now my outer is ready for the sleeves, but before I do that, I just want to bring my lining up to the same stage. So this is my back and that little pleat I mentioned earlier. So I have a couple of notches here that I'm just lining up and popping in a pin. And I'm stitching from the neck down the centre back at a diagonal, just by about an inch and a half or so, and that will give me this nice sort of box pleat effect. So off camera I've given that a bit of a press, and now I'm ready to join my front to my back at the shoulders. My fabric is right sides together and pinning, so stitching here exactly the same way as I did the outer. So at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. And again, off camera, I've just finished off that edge and given it a nice press. So that's my lining brought up to the same stage as my outer. And before I can add the sleeve to my outer, I need to make myself some piping. So I've just cut myself a long strip of bias just from the lining fabric and I'm just lining up the long edges of that bias and sandwiching in between some piping cord. I'm using a concealed zip foot here. It has that little ridge underneath which is super useful for making piping and I'm just manually setting down my needle here just making sure it's as close as I can get to that cord back stitching, using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, making sure the whole way along that that piping is sitting right at the crease and my raw edges are lined up. Just taking this nice and slowly, back stitching at the end, 
So that's my piping made. So now to add it to the outer. So I'm going to add it along the center front, up around the neck and back down the center front. And right along where my sleeves are going to be. So just lining up those raw edges. And pinning. And ready to stitch. So I'm stitching here within my seam allowance. I'm just tacking this piping on for now, just to hold everything where it should be. It will make the next step much easier. So that's from one side of the centre front, the whole way up around the neck and back down the other side. Nicely tacked in place. Same with the arms. Stitching here within my seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. That's my piping all tacked in place. So now I'm ready to add my sleeves. So my fabric underneath here is on the fold. I have a little notch at the top and bottom of that fold line. So that's my outer fabric cut out and of course I've done exactly the same with the lining. So my fabric here is right sides together and pinning and ready to stitch. Stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera, I'll just tidy up that edge on the overlocker and you can see here I've given it a nice press. So now on to the outer. So I'm just lining my sleeve up with the bodice, right sides together, sandwiching that piping in between and pinning. And I'm using my standard zipper foot here. This is just a little bit easier than using the concealed zip foot, just because I now have a few layers of fabric underneath my foot. Taking it nice and easy here the whole way along, making sure I'm sticking to the edge of that piping back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks from the inside and from the out I love this so off camera I've just tidied up that edge given it a nice press so now that my sleeves are all in place with my piping sandwich nicely in between I'm ready to add my front band. So my band consists of a back neck piece which is cut on the fold and two pieces that will be attached to the centre front and I've cut both of these out twice. The second time I've interfaced just to give a tiny little bit more structure. These will be attached to my lining so you'll see that a little bit later on. And before I can add these to both my outer and my lining, I need to join them together at the shoulder seams. So just lining the back over the front pieces, pinning those shoulder seams and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. Same thing with the facing pieces. So these are the pieces that will be attached to the lining back stitching at the start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching at the end and off camera I've pressed those shoulder seams open on both the facing and the outer. So now to add them to the bodice. So starting with the outer I'm just lining up the band from the bottom of the center front the whole way up around the neck and back down the other side pinning and ready to stitch and stitching here in exactly the same way as I did the sleeves so I'm using my standard zipper foot placing my needle as close as I can get to that piping starting at the center of the neck at the back and taking it nice and gentle the whole way along here I don't want my piping to be untidy or uneven so I'm just making sure that I'm taking my time the whole way down back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks from the inside 
and from the out, super neat and tidy. Love this. So that's my band all attached to the outer. So off camera I've just tidied up that edge but this time I've used pinking shears and this will help for two reasons. Number one to reduce the bulk around these curves and number two to help everything lie that little bit flatter here. So I've just pinned my facing to my lining in exactly the same way as I did the outer. Just this time I don't have the piping sandwiched in between and stitching again from the centre of the neck at the back right the whole way down the centre front back stitching at the start and the end so that's how that looks and off camera I've just trimmed that edge using the pinking shears again and given the whole thing a nice press so now I'm ready to add my pockets so I have two layers of outer fabric underneath both pocket pieces here and to give a little bit of structure to the pocket flap I'm just going to add some interfacing. This is the same interfacing I used on the front band. It's press on canvas, nice and lightweight and will just give the perfect amount of structure here. So off camera I've cut out my lining piece. So this is all of my pocket pieces here. And just so that the pocket ties in with the rest of this little jacket, I've ran some of that piping along the bottom edge of the pocket flap and stitching here as close to that piping cord as I can get, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. So now to add it to the pocket bag. So in preparation for that, I've just pressed up that seam allowance in underneath the piping and lining up the wrong side of the pocket flap with the right side of the pocket and stitching here right around the edge of the pocket flap. I'm stitching within my seam alliance along both of the sides across the top but when I get to the piping I'm stitching quite close. You will be able to see this stitching from the outside so I want it to be super neat and tidy. I've used a little bit of a longer stitch length here as well, so that's how that looks. So now to line my pocket. I'm laying my lining with my pocket right sides together and pinning. And I'm leaving myself a little gap at the bottom which I won't stitch. It's about an inch and a half wide and this will allow me to pull my pocket right side out. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance this time. Back stitching at the start, a little pivot at my corners, and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So off camera I've just pulled everything through to the right side and this is how it looks. So I just need to hand stitch that little gap closed, which again I've done off camera. So you can see I've done it here. And now I'm just measuring up from the hem about a couple of inches and about an inch in from the band. That's just a really nice pocket placement for me pinning those pockets in place and ready to stitch. Back stitching at the start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, pivoting at my corners, and back stitching at the end. So that's my pockets all in place, nice and neat and tidy. So after a bit of a press, this is how they look. Love these. So now I want to add a belt to this kimono, so I need some belt loops. So I've just cut myself two rectangles of fabric. I folded them in half along their length and in half again, so that all of my raw edges are tucked nicely in underneath. 
I've given them a little bit of a press and ready to stitch. So stitching here using a little bit of a longer stitch length, like stitching at the start and the end. And that's my belt loops all prepped. So now I'm just folding them in half and pinning them into my side seam a couple of inches up from the top of the pocket and ready to stitch. And stitching here within my seam alliance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. I'll stitch these in permanently when I sew up my side seams, which is my next step. So I'm just laying my front over my back, lining up those side seams, making sure those belt loops are tucked inside. My fabric is right sides together and pinning, doing exactly the same on the lining and ready to stitch. And I'm stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, starting at the hem, little bit of a pivot there, trying to stick to my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way up, and back stitching at the end. And off camera, I'll just finish off that raw edge on the overlocker. Doing exactly the same thing here again with the lining. Starting at the arm this time, back stitching, a little bit of a pivot up my hem, and back stitching to finish. So, as I say, off camera, I've just finished off that raw edge. And whilst I was there, I ran the hem through the overlocker as well, just to tidy it up and pressed up my alliance there. I've done exactly the same thing on the lining. So at this stage, I'm ready to join these two together. So I'm going to do that down the center front initially. So I've just laid my outer fabric inside my lining fabric so that right sides are facing. I'm lining up my shoulder seams, my centre back neck and pinning and ready to stitch. I'm starting here at the centre of the neck and working my way down the centre front at my one centimetre seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. And of course I do the same on the other side. So that's how that looks. So I just need to tidy up that edge, which I've done off camera in exactly the same way as I did before. So I've used the pinking shears here for exactly the same reason as I did before. And now to further help everything around the neck to sit nice and flat, I just want to understitch here. So I'm pressing that trim seam alliance towards the facing, so towards the lining side, and stitching here just about a couple of millimetres away from that seam you've just seen me sew, using a little bit of a longer stitch length. I'm sewing through the facing and through that seam allowance in underneath. And as I say, all this will do is help everything to lie nice and flat and keep that facing tucked in underneath where it should be. So it just needs a little bit of a press, which I've done off camera, and this is how it looks. So that's my lining all attached along the centre front. So I now need to do the same thing at the bottom of my sleeves. So my lining and outer fabric are currently wrong sides together. And in order for me to sew them up, I need them to be right sides together. So I'm just popping my hand in between the lining and outer fabric at the hem, coming up to the bottom of the sleeve, folding inside the outer fabric and lining fabric, and then pulling them through to the outside. So the two fabrics at the bottom of the sleeve are now right sides together and ready to be pinned. So lining up those notches you see me snip earlier, And ready to stitch. So stitching at my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching at the start 
and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera, I've just ran that edge through the overlocker, turned it right side out and given it a nice press. And this is how it looks. Super neat and tidy, love this. And of course I've done the same on the other side. So now that my lining is attached at the center front and the sleeves, I'm ready to close up the hem. So I'm just lining up that outer fabric with the lining the whole way along the hem. Pinning, leaving a little gap there in the middle, which just like the pockets earlier, I won't stitch. That will allow me to pull the whole thing through to the right side. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching at the start. A little pivot up to my facing. Pivot across the bottom of the facing and back stitching at the end. And of course I do the same thing on the other side. So I just need to pull the whole thing through to the right side, through that little gap. And once it's all pulled through, this is how it looks. Super pleased with how this has turned out. Everything's where it should be, nice and neat and tidy. So now the very last thing I have to do is just to close up that little gap. So I'm using some silk thread here and a super fine needle. And I'm just picking up a tiny bit of the hem, tiny bit of the lining fabric, and repeating. And I just finish that off camera, and this is how it looks. So I have one last thing I need to add to the jacket, and that is the belt, which is just a strip of fabric pressed along its length and stitched. And with that, this little jacket is complete. So I have that gorgeous piping in along the top of the sleeves, the whole way around the neck. I've got my belt and belt loops, my pockets, got my lining all fully attached on the inside. And this is how it looks on. So I could not be more pleased with how this has turned out. This wool fabric on the outer is just so gorgeous. The silk on the inside is beautiful against the skin. I love all the details of this. The piping, the pockets, the belt, the belt loops, everything about it. And I loved it so much that I made another couple. The fabric on the outer on both of these versions is silk. The piping is just flat piping here. These are so comfortable to wear. Can be dressed up or down and I absolutely love them. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks. <laughs>